so um, well, it can be difficult for some people. Who have no difficulty have difficulty sometimes in another way, and I can exp I can uh, relate to that very well. Um, being on a spiritual trip can be a lonely path. It can also be one that creates a lot of resentment, feeling like everybody else, nobody else is towing their weight, mm -hmm. pulling their weight. And and so I, I suggest to anybody who is any kind of, uh, on, on any kind of spiritual path, to find a spiritual group, find a spiritual mentor, mm -hmm. so that they stabilize themselves. Yeah. Because you can get really, really off the track Yeah, it's true. It's a long journey. That, it can I be. I went through that in two th from 2004 to 2007. Oh, three wow. Years. Uh -huh. Three years. years. I spent in what I would call, uh, uh, what was the term that I used to use for myself? I used to say, and, and, I, and I, I acknowledged it and I, uh, and I justified it because I didn't know anything better. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was a um, self-righteous, angry person. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> and it's easy huh? to get into that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so easy because you look around and you see everybody having a gay old time, <laughs> doing things that are so out of out of humanity. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, and it's painful to watch. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's painful to, uh, to be, be feeling an outsider to that and feel like uh, yeah, lonely and alone and like uh, an ermit. That's a good word for it. Yeah. And you even you even start to doubt mm -hmm. your own path. Yeah, because you need uh, you need connection, you need humanity, exactly. <laughs> human connection. Yeah, and and that's exactly what you say. You found you you center, you get into your spiritual path, you work on yourself, but then you're lost in the, in the large ocean, you know. And you're like, mm -hmm. I don't know where to connect. So that's why this like globalization, you know, getting other people to connect makes you feel less lonely, less alone. Well, and you can, sure. like, navigate your for journey sure. with other people, yeah. But you have to have that base to start with. You know, I, I yeah. couldn't have done this all by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I had a uh, wonderful base of support that I developed since 2007. Oh, oh uh-huh. And that, that makes the big difference. If you want to hear a quick funny story about it, I knew that I was getting out of control, but when I knew I was most out of control was sometime in the summer of 2007 when somebody almost ran me over with their bicycle <gasps> in the street in New York. Oh. And I shouted every possible epithet that you could possibly think of. I mean, I just cursed him out incredibly, and it got him so mad that he dropped his bike in the middle of Broadway. <coughs> And took off after me. Oh wow! And 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 I ran into the subway station, and he realized that he couldn't leave his his bike in the middle of, of Broadway, so he went back. So I never I never had an altercation, but it was very close. Oh, and I was wow. really feeling very very worried about how out of control I was getting. Yeah, that's so, really bad. Yeah. <clears throat> So the following Friday, I was running a group called Circle of Life Mastery, which is my uh, Facebook site. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And the, man, the first man to come, the first guest that night, was a uh, uh, total uh, um, uh, stranger. And he walked in and he said, Harvey, uh, are you uh, the, uh, the, the person who's running uh, Circle of Life Mastery? I said, yes. He said, uh, well, you must know Joseph Brousseau. And I said, no, never heard of the man. He said, oh, teaches life mastery training. Uh huh. And my ears perked up, and I said, oh, can you give me his number? Well, he gave me his number, and after the group on uh, the group was on Friday night, so I didn't call him until Monday morning. But I called Joseph. Turns out he lived two and a half blocks away from me in the city. Wow. <laughs> we, made, we made plans to go to lunch that day. We sat for lunch told me about his group and I said I'm in oh wow <laughs> the first the huh? first session that we had of his group and this is no lie mm -hmm. the first session of the group he put us through a process a guided uh, imagery process called loving presence loving presence 
Um, at the time, I had no idea about the heart part of it, but now I know that it connects definitely. Uh, but in that loving presence, I realized that I have a replacement for my self-righteous anger. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, that self-righteous anger was gone. Wow. If I ran into people who were in my way, who were doing something stupid, who were doing something callous or nasty or, uh -huh. or, uh, or uh, just any, anything that I could have judged, I forgot about judging them. I just loved them. Yeah, and you didn't get to that place of anger anymore. It didn't come right. to you. It was gone. Because you learned to gone. master. You learned to find your hurts. You could connect mm -hmm. with that place. Yeah. And it's really important. A lot of people don't know how. And a lot of people who are not even close to that place We not even, you know, search for anything. They, you know, that's why, <laughs> that's why we have to spread the message, you know. Try to yes. bring it more at that reach. Possible, yeah. That it's possible, that it's real, mm -hmm. that, it, that it's documented, that, it, that, it's, that it's scientific. Mm -hmm. What is going on? People need a lot of encouragement. I didn't. I was very lucky. I was very lucky. I was just carried along with a wave that started in 1966. Wow. <laughs> That's... And, and I don't know how that happened. Well, I do know how that happened, but uh, I, I, I never... If anybody would have asked me on the day that that this event happened in 1966, what what was going to be your future, I would not have been able to tell them that that my life was going to play out this way. No, But it did. Hmm. It did, and uh, and it just keeps it just keeps coming. It just keeps coming. Hmm. And what it mostly is 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 picking up signs from God in books and hmm. in. in, uh, in videotapes and, uh, and events that happen around me mm -hmm. uh, we're surrounded by by uh, messages mm -hmm. that yeah. are telling us the direction to go yeah it's like a universe it's a it. universal messages basically it's uh, when you're fully aware and fully connected with your higher power you feel more open to the messages from the universe in a yes, way exactly. yeah yeah Hey, uh, I'm going to have to stop here and we can do another part because uh, my podcast, uh, make sure I can uh, fit that in. And if you want, we can take over on another episode. Uh, but I think we have a that lot of information me. here and it's great. I'm going to lay everything down. Huh? Do you want to do, do a post-summer uh, solstice? Yeah, we can do a second episode. I just have to stop to make sure I can uh, get that in. Okay, when are you uh, doing your podcast? So I'm going to say goodbye for now, and we're going to go on part two, okay? Okay, now, was this the live podcast, or, or is this being uh, 